Hey, Pastor Gary here uh, for another Wednesday Word. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, coming to you today from the uh, Spring Campus Food Pantry. As you can see behind me, uh, we, you know, God has provided uh, our church uh, with an awesome and an excellent opportunity to continue to reach the world, reach our community, reach our neighborhood, reach our friends, our family, um, you know, uh, with with this ministry uh, to be able to provide meals and food for families, both in our church and, and around our community. Uh, to my, uh, over here to, to my left, I guess it would be your right on the screen there. Uh, there are boxes they're getting ready for Christmas, you know, for Thanksgiving. They, uh, they were, um, uh, able to provide meals for over 30 families. Uh, and this is something that's not just during the holiday season. I mean, you know, uh, food is a basic necessity and, and this is something that happens year round. It, it is not a, a seasonal need, but an everyday need. And so I just want to thank the, the ministry, uh, leaders, the team that that uh, just so diligently and, and uh, come and, and serve throughout the week and on Sundays. They give up their time just to continue to uh, uh, just meet the needs of, of, of both our church community and our, and our neighborhood community. And, and God, God be the glory because uh, this is something that started with an idea and is really just uh, just been uh, ex, you know expanded because uh, a, you know a couple of people chose to listen and to hear what God was telling them and so thank you for for all those who who serve in the ministry um, and that kind of gets us into uh, what we want I want to talk about today and that's you know a committed Christian uh, reaches the lost uh, and and we reach the lost by just sharing our testimony and being available. And, and, you know, sometimes we, 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 we share our testimony by our words, but we always share our testimony by our actions and what we do. Uh, and so let's review the characteristics of a committed Christian, what we've gone through so far. It's first, it's loves God, right? Uh, and, and we stand on God's word. Uh, we advocate for Christian unity. Uh, we have an attitude of faith and we aspire to holy living. Um, you know, in, in Matthew 5, 13 through 15, uh, Jesus tells us, and this is, this is God's word, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone, anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. We are called to be the salt and light. And, and that this is just in one example of what it means to be salt and light is to go out in the community and share Jesus with others and, 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 and just being and meeting people where they are. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, Father, I thank you that we can come today, Father, and just sit at your feet, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I thank you for the reminders, Father. The little things and the big things, Father, of what my life was without you and before you, Father, and how it is now, Father. Father, because truly is one decision that is the difference between me, a saved person, and a lost person. And that's the decision to accept you as my Lord and Savior, Father. Father, and I thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. So just as salt makes one thirsty, our testimonies are intended to create a thirst in the hearts of the lost. And just as light helps uh, see, helps us see our testimony, how our testimonies should help the lost see their need for Christ. So, you know, light helps us see. And in the same way, our testimony should be light to the lost person. So they're able to see their need for Jesus. As committed Christians, we have answered the call to be the salt and the light. The early believers were this kind of Christian. They understood the charge that Jesus had given them. Let's go to Acts 5, Acts 5.42. And in Acts 5.42, it, it reads this way. And in every day, in the temple, and from house to house, they kept right on teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So every day, they were you know, in the temple, and from house to house, they kept right on teaching right on teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. In seeking to be salt and light, they sought to witness to others. These early believers were intentional every day 
They were bold. They were in the temple. They were in the Jewish temple sharing about Jesus. They were consistent. They went from house to house. And they were relentless. They kept on teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So they were intentional. Paul said that we must be we must intentionally be looking for opportunities to share Christ with an unbelieving world. In Colossians 4 verses 5 and 6, it says conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, as seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. One of our primary pur purposes is to engage the lost world. Once we become Christians, once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, once we ask him to forgive us of our sins, our job then, our main purpose is to share Jesus. It's not to keep it for ourselves, it's to share it with others. We do this by sharing our testimony of what Jesus has done for us in our lives. If you're reaching others, for Jesus, you know, if reaching others for Jesus is not your main purpose as a Christian, then you're merely just going through the motions. So how can you prevent just going through the motions? First, we must recognize that without God, we can do absolutely nothing. It's not having church for the sake of having church. It's, it's having church so that we can worship and praise God for what he's done for us. You know, when we worship, when we sing, we praise, we don't do it with, with the thought of, okay, I hope nobody can hear me. We do it so that, God, I hope you can hear me. God, I hope you can hear the praise that I have for you because of what you've done in my life. The second thing is we must ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Is if, if what you do is for the praise of man or to get the next position, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. The why of what we do should be to please God. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Intentionally. Following and sharing Jesus prevents us from just going through the motions. Intentionally following and sharing Jesus prevents us from just with from just going through the motions. When we are not intentionally focused on drawing others to Christ, our lives are not lived for any purpose for any significance. The early believers were intentional with witnessing to others daily. Paul knew he had to be intentional because God entrusted him with the gospel. Just as God has entrusted us with the gospel, we too have to live with purpose, with intention, with boldness. We cannot keep it and hide it and, and refuse to share it. First Timothy 1.12 says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service. We've There are times that I've forgotten that. That I forgot that God put me here for a purpose. He's put me into service. I've been drafted into the army of God to share the gospel with the lost. The second thing is, these early Christians, they were bold. They were in the temple. They were not afraid to boldly, publicly give their testimony concerning Christ. Neither should we. Boldness in the biblical sense is not a personality trait. Boldness is acting by the power of the Holy Spirit on an urgent conviction in the face of some threat. Listen to what Paul writes in, in, in sec, the writes sec, Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 verses 7 and 8. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. There are three reasons why people don't share the gospel. They lack the gospel knowledge. How many times have you heard the gospel in a sermon or a book or in a conversation? If you've been a Christian for any length of time, you have likely heard the gospel. It is what brought you to salvation. Yet many still struggle to share the simple truths of the gospel. Second thing is apathy. Some just don't care about lost people. You know, our priorities and lives, you know, we don't have to say it. You don't have to say that you 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 don't have, you know, that you don't have a care, you don't care about lost people because it, it for for some it's 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 their priorities. 
or their lack of priorities or the way their lives reveal that they just don't care for the lost. They're so focused on what is going on with them that they make no time to share Jesus with people that they don't know or that they do know. They have long forgotten what it was like to live like to live without hope lost apart from Christ. We cannot and should not stop praying for lost people. Third thing is fear. We start asking ourselves, what will people think of me? What if they don't like me or my family? You know, we we the, people get paralyzed by the thought of being disliked, laughed at or openly mocked. We start playing the what if game. We need to live a, a Romans 1.16 life. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. We must commit ourselves to be like the early believers, to being part of the fellowship of the unashamed. The third thing, the, the, the early Christians were consistent. They went from house to house. They went from house to house to make sure that all heard about Jesus. It is well documented the early church met in homes. Today, people meet in buildings away from their homes. But one thing is important is that we should, the way we live our, our, our lives privately is the same way we should live our lives publicly. It's not, well, I'm a Christian at home, I'm a Christian at church, but at work, I'm somebody else. Around this group of people, I'm somebody else. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian all the time. We cannot be part-time Christians. We must love Jesus and live for him at our house as well as the church house. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. We can't be Christians only when people are watching us or only when people, when we know people are, 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 are around. Because as a Christian, your testimony is your walk. Your testimony is how you act when nobody's around. The fourth thing is they were relentless. They kept on teaching and preaching. Even though they had been persecuted and imprisoned, they continued to share God's word. They faced ridicule everywhere they went, but they continued to spread the gospel. Let's look at Acts 5, 27 through 29. And we're going to catch it right in the middle of Acts 27. It says, the high priest questioned them saying, we gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. Well, amen. Let's fill spring. Let's fill magnolia. Let's fill... Fill Texas, let's fill the United States, let's fill the world with his name. Let me go on. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. I'm sure that they were discouraged, but they were, but they persisted. Throughout the Bible, we read of men and women who persisted in sharing the gospel. It was their faith that gave them the motivation to relentlessly share the gospel with the lost. So you might be thinking, man, you know, the church needs to start a ministry that focuses on outreach. Our ch or our church doesn't have the resources for this. Well, what resources did the early church have to use in sharing Jesus with others? Nothing. All they had was their relationship with Jesus and their testimony. That's what they were equipped with their testimony, to share how Jesus had changed their life. And that is all we need too. Philemon 1.6, and this is out of the CEV. This is the CEV uh, translation. As you share your faith with others, I pray they may come to know all the blessings Christ has given us. As committed Christians, we must be intentional, bold, consistent, relentless. The early church rejoiced that they could suffer for the Lord Jesus. They continue to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. That's the message. We cannot stop we cannot stop sharing the message of Jesus Christ with the lost. And we do that by speaking. We do that by just our walk and how we interact with people and how we treat people. Our interactions with our conversations with our coworkers, our family, our friends, our church family, each other. 
That's how we share Jesus with others. Amen. Amen. Well, while I'm here in the in the food pantry, I want to let you know that it is open. And so if you or someone you know has a need, please contact the church. Uh, this Sunday, um, there has been and, and will be uh, food after church uh, or items in the in the kitchen downstairs. Um, usually there's milk in, in the refrigerator. Uh, I encourage you to walk by there. Um, and, 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 you know, take what you want. Don't take more than you need, but take what you need or take, you know, take, take some items and then share this ministry with others because someone, you know, has a need, whether or not they've shared that with you. Wouldn't it be awesome just to say, Hey, I didn't know this, but did you know our church has a, has a food pantry? Spark a conversation, be the hands and feet that Jesus has called each of us to be. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Father, I just thank you again, Father, for the opportunity just to, to learn more about you, Father. Father, for uh, just your word and your promises, Father. Father, I, I pray for just encouragement, Father. I pray for conviction, Father. I pray for a boldness to share you with the lost, Father. Father, I do pray for the lost, Father. I pray that, Father, they just, where they are right now, Father, and we each know somebody right now. We're thinking of them, Father, Father. Let us lift them up to you, Father. Father, and give us the boldness, Father, to speak truth into them, Father. Just to pour into them, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. A couple of announcements, of course. Uh, don't forget our Sunday service. Two times you can catch us either at 9 o'clock at the Magnolia campus, either in person or online, 1045 at spring, again, either in person or online. Uh, we have our Christmas Eve service on the 24th, 5.30 at Magnolia, 7 o'clock at Spring. Uh, start inviting. Uh, pray about coming. That's going to be a great time in the Lord, a time of celebration, time of just uh, just worshiping and praising God for all that he's done. Uh, <clears throat> don't forget your tithes and offerings. And with that, God bless and hope to see you all Sunday. Bye.